Now speaking, Matt Welch, Vice President, Investor Relations. Thank you for joining us today for Boeing's second quarter 2023 earnings call. I am Matt Welch, and with me today are Dave Calhoun, Boeing's President and Chief Executive Officer, and Brian West, Boeing's Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. Today, we will discuss our financial performance for the second quarter of 2023, including our revenue, earnings, cash flow, and other key metrics. We will also provide an update on our progress in executing our long-term strategy and our outlook for the remainder of the year. Please note that detailed financial information is included in today's press release, and projections, estimates, and goals discussed today involve risks, which are described in our SEC filings and in the forward-looking statement disclaimer at the end of the web presentation. Now speaking, Dave Calhoun, President and Chief Executive Officer. Thank you, Matt. This quarter was a solid one for all of our businesses. We generated $2.6 billion in free cash flow and are confident in our $3 billion to $5 million target for the year. Commercial airplanes had a strong quarter with 460 net orders booked and 220 key orders firmed up with Air India and Ryanair. We delivered 136 commercial airplanes in the quarter, including 103 737s and 20 787s. We are on track to reach our delivery guidance for the year. We have contained the spirit quality escapes, the work stoppage, and the bridge impairment, which will cost us a few deliveries in the quarter. We are progressing across our key development programs, the 737-7, the Minus 10, the 777X, and the 777-8F. The 737 MAX has flown more than 5 million flight hours and over 2 million flights since returning to service, all with exceptional reliability. In China, more than 90% of the 737 MAX aircraft are back in service. Boeing Defense is making progress on improving operating performance and has booked orders valued at $6 billion this quarter. Boeing Global Services had a strong quarter with healthy revenue and expanding earnings and margin. We are well positioned for the year and for the long term. Now speaking, Brian West, Executive Vice President, Chief Financial Officer. Good morning everyone. Boeing reported second quarter revenue of $19.8 billion, up 18% year over year. Core operating margin was minus 2%, and the core loss per share was $0.82. Cents. Free cash flow was positive $2.6 billion in the quarter, significantly better versus last year and last quarter. Commercial airplanes booked 460 net orders in the quarter, including 220 with Air India, 39 with Riyadh Air, and signed a purchase agreement with Ryanair for up to 300 737 MAX 10s. Revenue was $8.8 billion, up 41% year-over-year on 136 airplane deliveries driven by the 87 program. Operating margin was minus 4.3%. Defense and space booked $6 billion in orders in the quarter, including an award from the U.S. Army for 19 CH-47 Chinooks, and the backlog is now at $58 billion. Revenue was flat at $6.2 billion, and operating margin was minus 8.5%, primarily driven by three fixed-price development programs. Services received $4 billion in orders during the quarter, and the backlog is $18 billion. Revenue was $4.7 billion, up 10% year-over-year, and operating margin was 18%. We ended the quarter with $13.8 billion of cash and marketable securities, and our debt balance decreased to $52.3 billion. The 2023 overall financial outlook is unchanged from what we previously shared, including $3 billion to $5 billion of free cash flow generation. We still have confidence in the $3 billion to $5 billion of free cash flow for the year. Commercial demand remains strong across our key programs and services, and defense demand is also robust. We still expect operating and financial performance to improve in the second half of 2023, and we are confident in $10 billion of free cash flow in 2025, 2026. Now speaking, Dave Calhoun, President and Chief Executive Officer. We had a solid quarter and are confident that we will successfully manage our fixed-price contract exposures. Our products will perform as expected or better, ensuring the warfighter is well-equipped. Jeffrey's analyst Sheila Kahiaglu inquired, Dave, Brian, and Matt, how can production rates and pricing help turn the commercial airplanes operating loss of $383 million into a positive? Brian West replied, Hey Sheila, last quarter our BCA margins were negative 9%, but we saw good progress as they improved to negative 4%. We expect to see further improvement in the back half of the year, although still negative in the third quarter. We're confident that by the end of the year or early next year, these margins will move into positive territory. This is due to rate ramp, abnormal items being in the rearview mirror, and good pricing and volume. The team is focused on meeting these expectations. Robert W. Baird and company analyst Peter Herman inquired, Brian, what are the key factors that will drive cash profitability improvement? Is it reaching a certain rate or completing liquidations in 2024? 
Brian West replied, we're focused on the liquidation benefit of closing our 37 and 87 factories, which will be substantially behind us by 2024. We've also announced rate breaks going to 38, with more to come, that will help us get back to normal BCA margins in the low double-digit area by 2025 to 2026. We know what levers we need to pull to get there, we just have to execute. Wolf Research Analyst Miles Walton inquired, Brian, are we now at the top end of the 737 delivery range for the second half? Dave, what regulatory progress has enabled the 777X production pull forward? Dave Calhoun replied, no changes have been made, we remain confident in the regulatory process. We are proactively working to stay ahead of production, and our projections remain intact. Brian West replied, in Q2, we delivered 103 737s and expect quarterly rates to be higher than that. We had some impact from Spirit, but we are confident that we can move up to the higher end of our range. We'll keep reporting on our progress as we execute and deliver more planes. City analyst Jason Gursky inquired, can you confirm the 60-15-25 mix of margins in defense and discuss your assumptions for getting back to a high single-digit rate in that business by 25, 26? Brian West replied, services had an excellent quarter, with both commercial and government businesses performing well. We expect margins to remain in the mid-teens, with occasional quarters being a bit better. We feel confident in the long-term outlook of this business. Dave Calhoun replied, it's clear that the market is still in a supply-constrained environment. We're seeing favorable pricing as a result, and it doesn't look like this situation will change anytime soon. Everyone is competing for the next part, so I expect this to continue for the foreseeable future. Brian West replied, the defense business is performing as expected. We have 15% of our portfolio in fixed price development programs that we are working to stabilize and complete. The remaining 60% is stable and we are looking for ways to increase productivity. The last 25% is not where it needs to be, but we have a plan to turn it around. By 25-26, we anticipate the 15% will be stable and the 85% will be performing at attractive margins due to our efforts to stabilize and increase productivity. We have all the levers in place and the team is focused on executing the plan. Colon and company analyst Kai Von Rumor inquired, can you provide more color on the programs that are underperforming and what it would take to get them back in the black? Brian West replied, Kai, we're not expecting modest profitability in the quarter. We anticipate a significant gap in our BDS portfolio due to the complexity of the programs and products, as well as the labor needed to bring them back to life. It will take time to get these programs in a better spot, but we are confident that we can make progress and work our way through it. Colin and company analyst Kai Von Rumor inquired, can you explain how inflation and disruption have impacted your fixed price contracts and what steps you are taking to address the issue? Dave Calhoun replied, no, we don't expect to see a significant change in pricing or contracts. We are working to get our product line up to speed, and there are new capabilities embedded in these products that we are learning how to use. We are making progress, but it takes time. We are confident that we will be back to where we were before. Milius Research Analyst Rob Spingarn inquired, Dave, what is the potential for the transonic truss-braced wing aircraft to enter service with current-gen engines like the LEAP or GTF and later take on a CFM rise? Could this aircraft also service the large narrow-body market, such as the 321? Dave Calhoun replied, I'm glad to answer this question. We're heavily invested in this technology and believe it can deliver performance that the industry is accustomed to seeing with new programs. We're intent on proving this technology and hopeful that it will mature as expected. If it does, we'll have exciting options for power plants, including existing power, a bigger fan diameter, and potentially open rotor. We just need to prove and mature the technology, and if it behaves as it did in the wind tunnel, we'll be in a good place. Morgan Stanley analyst Christine Lee Wog inquired, what supply chain bottlenecks are you monitoring to increase 737 max production rate to 38 per month? Any additional color on the timing of this step up? Brian West replied, yes, Christine, we are confident that the supply chain is in place to meet our goal. We have been aware of this for some time and are pleased to be able to move forward. The master schedule is clear on what the subsequent step-ups will look like and we will take it one step at a time. We are delighted to make this first move to 38. Dave Calhoun replied, our primary focus is on ensuring readiness for the 50.1 product launch. Morgan Stanley analyst Christine Lee Wog inquired, what metrics are needed to move from 38 to 42 per month? Dave Calhoun replied, yes, we are confident that 38 will come in a stable form. We have excellent visibility into our supply chain and can anticipate the step-ups to 40, 42, 44, etc. Our factories are assembling and delivering at a steady pace, so we are confident that 38 will be achieved. Barclays analyst David Strauss inquired, Dave, what is the current status of 787 deliveries and what challenges are you facing? Brian West replied, we are confident that we will reach our goal of 70 to 80 deliveries for the 87 this year. 
we have been working diligently on joint verification and are focused on stabilizing at 4 and then working our way to 5. Dave Calhoun replied, we are confident in the stability of our product line and there are no new issues to report. Barclays analyst David Strauss inquired, Brian, what is driving the increase in operating cash flow forecast from 2.5 to 3.5? Is it working capital advances coming in sooner or better than expected? Brian West replied, we are pleased to report that orders and advances are better than expected. This is a positive indicator for our business and our investors. Alliance Bernstein analyst Doug Harnd inquired, can you discuss your plans for increasing production rate and how you plan to manage potential new orders? Dave Calhoun replied, Doug, our goal is to achieve stability in the second half of 2024. We have the labor in-house to increase production rates, but we need to ensure that we execute well and stay focused on this goal. If we do, then we can start talking about increasing production to 60 planes. Alliance Bernstein analyst Doug Harnd inquired, how are you thinking about the logistical complexity of renting one line in Everett if you aren't up to 60 yet? Dave Calhoun replied, we are focused on stability and having more capacity than we need to ensure that we are ready for the next growth phase. We are taking a careful approach to ensure that any capacity we have is used in an optimal way, so that it does not cost us much and improves our delivery and stability. We are also making sure that our workforce transition is successful, as this is the most important part of our strategy. J.P. Morgan Chase and company analyst Seth Seifman inquired, Brian, what are the key items to watch in the supply chain for the 787 production ramps and deliveries? What is the potential for deliveries next year and how can we ensure we understand it without getting overly exuberant? Brian West replied, I'm confident that our 87 team is on track to reach their goal of five deliveries per month by the end of the year. We have seen steady progress in joint verification and production rates, and we are no longer in the abnormal category. We are on a path to reach 10 deliveries per month by 2025 to 2026. The supply chain is becoming more stable and coordinated, and we are continuing to execute our plans. Bank of America Merrill Lynch analyst Ron Epstein inquired, what is the status of delivering new aircraft into China and what is your sense on the current situation? Dave Calhoun replied, yes, Ron. We reduced our exposure to finished goods inventory in China to 85 airplanes. We worked with our customers there to make this happen and the return to service work is largely complete. The reliability of the fleet has been great and we're getting positive signs that delivery will resume. We want to support our customers in China and be a free trade beacon, but our guidance is not dependent on it. Bank of America Merrill Lynch analyst Ron Epstein inquired, what are your thoughts on the A220 Stretch 500 and how does it fit into your product development plans? Dave Calhoun replied, I don't view our competitor's product as a meaningful threat. We're focused on developing an airplane that is 25 to 30 percent better than what is currently available, and that is why we are investing in transonic wings. I don't believe that our competitor will be able to make a significant difference in the market. Goldman Sachs analyst Noah Papanak inquired, what is the official plan for increasing production of the MAX to 42 a month by the end of the year? Is new aircraft pricing up a double-digit percentage compared to pre-pandemic? What is the expected margin in the defense business for next year? Brian West replied, our defense margins need to improve in the coming year. We won't speculate on the exact level, but we are focused on the current rate of 38 and the goal of 50 by 2025 to 2026. Our supply chain is aware of the rate breaks and is prepared to move forward with the necessary steps to reach that goal. Dave Calhoun replied, I'm confident that our team is well prepared to deliver the messages that will help our investors understand our business. We have a clear understanding of our financials, industry trends, and are competitive. Dave Calhoun replied, I can confirm that the industry is short of airplanes and competition for orders is fierce. We are seeing improved conditions due to the constrained market.